Okay, so here we go with part two. Part two is um, basically what we're going to do is the same thing we were doing just a few minutes ago, which was um, labeling. We're still going to have to label, except now we're going to go a step further and we're actually going to set up the ratios. Remember, a ratio is just a fraction. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to focus on angle theta. So I'm going to circle angle theta. Okay, and as I circle angle theta, I'm going to label my triangle. So this is the hypotenuse. This is opposite, and this is adjacent. Okay, so there's my labels. So now setting up the ratios, since sine, remember SOKATOA, SOKATOA, all right? So sine of theta is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Well, the opposite side of angle theta is side A, the hypotenuse is side C. There's your first ratio. That's all. When I ask you to set up a ratio, you don't have to solve anything. You just set it up. The cosine of theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Well, that would be B. This hypotenuse is C. The tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So A over B. So I just set up all three ratios for theta. Now let's do the same thing and let's look at angle beta. So I'm going to erase this because obviously everything's going to change if we're talking about a different angle. So let's look at angle beta. So I'm going to circle angle beta. My hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse. Now this side is opposite and this side is adjacent. So the sine of beta is B over C. The cosine of beta is A over C. The tangent of beta is O opposite, which is B over adjacent over A. B over A. So that's all you have to do when you're setting up a ratio. Just write down the fraction and you're done. We will solve them, but first we need to practice setting them up. So let's find the trig ratio for both angles, theta and beta. So now we're going to use numbers instead of letters. So if we're just focusing on theta, so I'm going to focus on theta. So this is my hypotenuse. This is opposite of theta. This is adjacent to theta. So the sine, I'm going to write my SOKOTOA over here. So sine says I have to use opposite and hypotenuse, so 4 and 5. And they're in order, which goes, the first one goes in the top, second one goes in the bottom. The cosine of theta is 3 over 5. And the tangent of theta is OA, so 4 over 3. Okay, so now let's look at what happens when we have beta as our angle. So now we're referencing beta. This is still the hypotenuse. Now this side is opposite and this side is adjacent. It does not look like... All right, so sine OH, so that would be 3 over 5. The cosine of beta, AH, 4 over 5. And the tangent of beta, OA, 3 over 4. Okay, so why are we learning trig? We're learning trig to help us find missing angles and sides. So the first thing we're going to learn to do is we're going to learn to find the missing angles. It's very easy. It's so um, easy to be done in the calculator. So you're going to use these buttons right here. You have the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, and then you have the sine to the negative one, cosine to the negative one, tangent to the negative one. Well, you're fixing to learn about these buttons, okay? So I know you probably don't have a calculator at home, but when you get to class, it's going to make a whole lot more sense. So um, since the negative ones are in, in blue or in this on this picture, they're yellow, but on your calculators, they'll be blue. That means you have to hit the second to get there, just like when we do uh, squared and square root. So if we were going to try this, um, what we would do is that's telling us to find the measure of angle theta. Okay, so we're going to use the sine. So if you look up here, remember the sine of theta was this one here. So that would be, I'm going to write it over here, it, that would be the sine of angle theta is 4 over 5. So to find out what it is, what you're actually going to do is you're going to take the word sine 
and you're going to move it to the other side. Well, when you move the word sine to the other side, it becomes inverse. So I have theta is sine inverse of 4 over 5. And then you just type it in your calculator. You hit second sine 4 over 5, and it tells you what angle theta is, which comes to be 53.1 degrees. So 53.1 degrees is what it comes out to be. So if we did the same thing for the cosine of theta. So the cosine of theta up here is 3 over 5. So if I want to take the word cosine and move it to the other side, then I would have theta is the inverse cosine of 3 over 5. Just type it in the calculator. Guess what? You get 53.1 because it's the same angle theta. If we did the same thing for tangent, the tangent of theta is 4 over 3. So I want to take the word tangent and move it. So it would be tangent, I'm sorry, theta is the inverse tangent of 4 over 3. Type it in the calculator. Guess what? It's 53.1. It's the same angle. So you can get the same number depending on what's given. So now let's find the measure of angle beta using any of the trig ratios. So you could pick one if we were in class. So I'm just going to pick sine just to keep it simple. So I'm going to say the sine of theta is 3 over 5. So that means theta is the inverse sine of 3 over 5. So I type it in the calculator and I hit enter and I'm going to get 36.9 degrees. So that is how you find angles. You just you move the word to the other side, hit it in the calculator, done. Okay? All right. So now let's find the trig ratios for the angle 40 and for beta. Okay? So if I'm focusing on angle 40, this is the hypotenuse, this is opposite, this is adjacent. So the cosine of 40, remember Sokotoa, I'm going to write it at the top so I can quickly glance up and refer to it. Cosine starts with a C, so I have to use the A and the H. So 9.3 comes first, 9.53 over the hypotenuse 12.45. The tangent of 40 uses the T. Um, so that's OA, so that's 8 over 9.53. So 8 over 9.53. Now, if I were to find the sine of beta, so the sine of beta, so now this time I need to reference a different angle. So I'm going to reference angle beta. So if I'm referencing this angle, this is still my hypotenuse. Now this side is opposite, and this side is adjacent. So sine is OH, so that's 9.53 over 12.45. The cosine is AH, so that's 8 over 12.45. Tangent is OA, so 9.538. Okay, since I know this angle is 40, I know beta has to be 50 because these two are complementary. But if I do second sine 9.53 over 12.45, so if I did beta is the inverse sine of 9.53, if I actually typed it in the calculator, 12.45, then I'm going to get that it is 49.9, which is about 50 degrees, which is what it should be. Same thing here, if I did inverse cosine, I'm going to get that this is 50.0, 50 which is 50 degrees. If I do inverse tangent, I'm going to get 49.9, which is, guess what, 50. So that means beta has to be 50, which we already knew that because they have to be complementary. All right, so... Let's find the trig ratio as a fraction, a decimal, and then find the angle. Okay, so the sine of angle A. So if I'm looking down here at angle A, okay, this is my hypotenuse. This is opposite, so this is adjacent. Okay, so this is 8, 15, 17. Okay, so this is a Pythagorean triple. So let's find out what angle A is in this Pythagorean triple. So the sine of angle A, so so Katoa, so S-O-H, C-A-H, T-O-A. So um, to do sine, I have to use the O and the H, so that's 15 
over 17. Cosine is the A and the H. That's 8 over 17. So now, oh, that's cosine of B. That's wrong. So back up. I hope you used your pencil today. So the tangent of angle A, we'll go back down here to A since we're referencing, tangent is OA, so that's 15 over 8. Okay, so now if I'm looking at angle B, this is still the hypotenuse. Now this side is opposite, and this side is adjacent. So the cosine of B is A over H, which is 15 over 17. And the sine of angle B is 8 over 17. So if you just find the decimal of this right here, 15 over 17, it's 0.88. Obviously, it's still 0.88 here because it's just the fraction that we're looking at. 8 over 17 is 0.47. And the 15 over 8 is 1.875. So if I find the angle, this is going to be angle A is the inverse sine of 0.88 or 15 over 17, which when you type it in, you're going to get... 61.9. Same thing here. If we find B, this is the inverse cosine of 0.88, which is 28.1. Which would make sense because these two are supposed to be complementary, so they're supposed to add up to 90. So that's pretty much how you would go through. So now let's find the value of each ratio to the nearest 10 thousandths, so four decimal places. These are the easiest in the world. All you do, you go to your calculator and you go cosine 14, enter. And you get 0 0.9703. Sine 50, 0 0.7660. You always, always, always need to make sure your calculator is in degree mode and we'll talk about that more in class degree mode. If it's not degree mode, even if you do everything right, you'll get all the wrong answers because the calculator will be in the wrong mode. All right, so we've practiced setting up ratios. We've practiced labeling sides. We've practiced finding angles. What about finding the missing side? Okay, so all you need in trig is an angle and a side. That is all you need. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to Circle the angle we're going to be referencing. So we're going to be referencing angle 34. This is our hypotenuse. This side is opposite, and this side is adjacent. So if I'm going to find the side x, so side x is opposite, and they give me the adjacent. Okay, so I'm going to look over here at Sokotoa, because you always want to use Sokotoa, because she tells you, um, Chief so Sokotoa tells you what you need to be using. All right, and we'll talk more about him, too. All right, so if I have to use the O and the A, because you don't want to use the Y because you need a number. So if I have to use O and the A, I look here, O and A, that means I need to use the tangent. So you're going to write the tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. And basically what happens is, is, if you think of this as a proportion, when you cross multiply, 1 times x is x, and then you multiply this way, you get 14 times the tangent of 34. Now remember, the tangent of 34 is a decimal, because we just did that on the previous page. You just hit tangent 34, it gives you a decimal. It's just a repeating decimal, so it's easier to write it like this. So you just type it in your calculator, 14, tan, 34, hit enter, and you get your answer. And the answer is 9.4. So x is 9.4. Okay. Same thing to find side y. So this time we're going to use, um, we have to use 14 again. So we're going to use a and h. a and h tell me I need to use cosine. So the cosine of 34 is a, 14, over h, which is y. So again, if we put it over 1, we're going to cross multiply. So we get y cosine 34 equals 14. Well, to get y by itself, since I'm multiplying by the cosine of 34, I want to divide by the cosine of 34. So I would divide both sides by the cosine of 34, and it would give me that y is um, 130, no wait, cosine of y, 16.9. Sorry, wrong, wrong problem. So this side is 
This side is 9.4. All right, we still have three problems to do. We're going to save those for class and do those when we get back to class. So I will see you guys later. Have a good one.